Okay. Hi everyone and welcome to The Journey. Today we're going to be talking about chlamydia and gonorrhea. Now with chlamydia and gonorrhea is the most common causes of endocervitis, okay? Um, although mycoplasma may also be involved. Now you may say, what is endocervitis? So I will put more information about that in the description box below. But just in a nutshell, it's pretty much uh, inflammation of the cervical glands, okay? Um, because of intercourse or other things like that, okay? Also, if untreated, infection may extend to the uterus, the fallopian tubes, or the whole pelvic cavity, all right? Uh, another thing that we have is inflammation can irritate the cervical tissues, right? Um, which can cause spotting and bleeding that may occur. Um, also, you may have cervicitis, okay? Then you have chlamydia and gonorrhea, which is transmitted through sexual intercourse, which we know it is a S. STI, okay, sex, sexual transmitted infection, and I'm gonna call STDs. Um, so they're STIs, all right, and those are two main ones that are very uh, prone to females, okay. Also, chlamydia can result in serious complications of a pelvic infection, okay. Also, chlamydia infection and gonorrhea can coexist. All right, together, so most of the time you'll see them together, and that happens within 25% of women where they actually have both of the actual infection, okay, chlamydia and gonorrhea, okay? And also, if you want more information about uh, pelvic inf infection, uh, check out my other video for pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, and that will give you all the information you need to know about pelvic infections, okay? Also, with gonorrhea, all right, so the next couple of... Um, Information is mainly geared towards gonorrhea, but not limited to chlamydia, all right? The major cause of PID with no treatment. So if a patient has gonorrhea and they, they weren't aware that they have gonorrhea, right? And you're not getting that treatment, eventually um, it's staying in your system. It can cause more damage and that's where you can get the PID from, okay? So if it's treated in the early phases, you won't really um, get to see PID because, you know, you were able to treat it before that problem occurred. Also, you have two-way infertility, you have ectopic pregnancy, and you have chronic pelvic pain, all right? 50% of women experiences no symptoms, so that's pretty much half. So it's 50-50, you know? And also in males, you may experience uteritis, and epididymitis may occur, which the epididymitis is pretty much happening in the epididymis, which is actually within the testes area. And then you have uteritis, which is pretty much in the urethra, the ureter area. So again, uh, that's why men, when they have gonorrhea, they, they complain about that burning sensation when they have to urinate, right? And also, just any pain and discomfort in this area, especially with, with, with the men, okay? But for females, the main thing is going to be the PID. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the signs and symptoms, also known as your clinical manifestations, also known as your nursing assessment. All right, so oftentimes, there aren't any symptoms. Again, with gonorrhea, there's a 50, 50 chance of having um, symptoms. So again, some may have symptoms, some may not. But if they do have symptoms, these are the things to watch out for. So you can have cervical discharge, you can have this pinorrhea, which is pretty much painful intercourse. You have this urea, which is painful um, when urinating. And you have bleeding may also occur. All right, so those are your signs and symptoms that are typical in a patient who has uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea. Now, uh, as I'm going on with this video, you may see that I may mention uh, chlamydia, but I don't mention gonorrhea, or I mention gonorrhea, but I don't mention chlamydia. They kind of coexist together. Um, they're very, very similar. It's almost as if when you have um, peanut butter and jelly, right? Most of the time you won't eat peanut butter unless you have jelly, or you won't eat jelly unless you have peanut butter, right? So it's almost, it's almost the same with chlamydia and gonorrhea, okay? When you see one, you kind of see the other, all right? The same uh, manifestations, the same makeup. Um, they use the same medications for treatment um, most of the time. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's very similar. So if you see mistake for one, it doesn't mean that it, it's excluding the other. This is just what you mainly would see. But they, are, they, they do have a lot of similarities together. So if that helps you while you're watching this video to kind of get a better understanding of what's going on with chlamydia and what's going on with gonorrhea. So with complications, okay, and these are complications for both. All right, you have an increase of ectopic pregnancy, you have an increased risk of infertility, 
We also have women who are untreated. Remember, like I was saying before earlier, if they're untreated and they don't know that they have this at all, eventually it can lead to more damage causing pelvic inflammatory disease, also known as PID. All right? You also have conjunctivitis and you have perihepatitis as well, which this is inflammation of the of the liver and you have inflammation of the con conjuga of the eye, all right, for conjunctivitis. And then you also have women who are pregnant, right, and they are infected. Um, you can have a stillbirth or you can have a neonatal birth, I mean, a neo neonatal death, okay? So that means the baby can die during the womb, okay, which you have a stillbirth. So you're literally pushing out a dead, a dead baby, all right? Um, you can, it can also cause premature labor, okay? Um, so the baby can be born prematurely. So the baby does survive, right? The baby's at risk for pneumonia and um, conjunctivitis as well, okay? And you also have tubal disease, okay? So all these things are your complications that you can see in both chlamydia and gonorrhea. Okay, so the diagnostic testing. Okay, so you're gonna do a culture or smear or any other methods of using pretty much a swab to kind of get the bacteria so that way they can determine whether it's chlamydia or gonorrhea, all right? And that's mainly gonna be the main thing. And how they're gonna get that is from the cervical discharge. So remember, the cervical discharge is pretty much, that's that's the bacteria in itself, right? That's the bacteria with, the, with, with, with all of the byproducts and everything of the bacteria, right? That's excreting from the body. So you wanna use that and it can be from the cervical discharge or the penile discharge that comes from the partner, okay? So either or, you want to make sure that you get a sample so that way you can test it, so that way you can treat with the proper medication. All right, so medical management now. So with the medical management, right, a patient who has chlamydia is treated with doxy doxycycline, which doxycycline I put in parentheses the trade name. So again, try to remember the generic name because that's what you're going to be tested on, that's what you're going to be um, um, expected to know for NCLEX, right? Because they're not going to have the trade name, they're only going to have the um, generic name, all right? So you have doxycycline and you're going to use that for one week or you can use the single dose of erythro, um, erythromycin, okay, also known as Zithromax. So erythromycin, either one dose or doxycycline for one week. Also, um, because of the increased incidence of the cold infection with chlamydia and gonorrhea, right, you want to treat uh, gonorrhea with the same treatments that you would use for chlamydia, all right? Also, you want your partners to be treated, all right? So the minute that you, you, you know, right, um, CDC is going to then um, get all the information from the, from, from the patient about the partner and they're all going to make a separate phone call to the partner to let them know, hey, um, you know, you may be positive for this and that and that, please come to the facility to be checked out and things like that. So there are ways of finding out. So if you are infected, you have to give the name of that partner and from there, the, the, the rest will be taken care of um, the Department of CDC. Okay? So it's not, oh, I don't want to. No, you have to, okay, by law. So uh, the next thing is for pregnant women, right? You want to avoid tetracycline, okay? And I put that in red. All right, let me get out the way. I put that in red so you, that way you guys know that is a red flag. You do not give a pregnant woman tetracycline. And they may have questions like that where they pose a patient, you know, is suspected of having chlamydia and they want to give prophylactic treatment, so, um, you know, and she's missed her period for three months, right? They may not say exactly that she's pregnant, but hey, if a woman missed her period in three months, that should let you know, hey, she may be pregnant. So again, be careful how they word the questions. So just kind of think in your head, um, you know, she may be pregnant, okay? With which medication um, do you want to avoid? Or which medication is best of choice, right? And you're looking and you're like, oh, I remember it was something with a cycling, right? Because you have doxycycline that is part of the Sorry, that is part of the same treatment as tetracycline, right? Because they're in the same family, but she's pregnant. So it's a whole nother different um, category that she has to get, all right? So avoid tetracycline because of the adverse effects of the fetus, okay? So you, it's harmful for the fetus, you don't want that. 
So instead, what they're going to take is erythromycin, okay? So erythromycin is ordered. And I also believe that when the babies are born, they have their erythromycin drops that they put in the baby's eyes. So if you ever have a newborn or you have family members or friends that have a newborn, that you see that the, the baby has like this glistening look in their eyes, okay? That is the erythromycin uh, drops that they put in their and put in their eyes, okay? I believe it's this one. Um, I know... I know right 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 from birth they go ahead and, and they drop that droplet and I believe it's that solution the erythromycin okay um, also with that you the CDC no longer recommends uh, fluoroquinones okay and that's pretty much a category of a uh, type of antibiotics and some medication that's in that category is your levoquin and your uh, ciprofloxin uh, also known as cipro Okay, and that is used for treating gonorrhea. They no longer use that. So the CDC no longer uses this medication to treat gonorrhea. So Cipro and uh, um, Levoquin we do not use for gonorrhea. Instead, what they do use is the cephalosporin is recommended for gonorrhea. Okay, so when you're treating a patient with gonorrhea, they are going to have gonorrhea plus the medication that they will use for chlamydia. All right, so cephalosporin is used for gonorrhea, right, and you have erythromycin or doxycycline for chlamydia, all right? So I'm going to move on. You're going to have your annual, annual screenings for your chlamydia, okay, and that is recommended so that way you know what's going on. And again, uh, sexual, if you're sexually assaulted, like say a woman has been raped or a guy has been raped because men do get raped as well, okay, there's nothing to be uh, ashamed about because it can happen to anyone. All right, so um, if you are sexually assaulted, right, you want to go to the hospital or go to the emergency room, go to the, the, the police department and, you know, file a complaint, let them know they're going to take you to the hospital. When you get to the hospital, what they're going to do, they're going to test cultures because they want to make sure that the person who raped you or so didn't have an infection themselves. So it's just to cover and protect yourself, okay? So you want to prophylactically be treated and you're going to be prophylactically be treated with antibiotics and um, antibiotics in these categories, right? They're also going to take a culture for chlamydia and other type of S STIs are going to be obtained, okay? And they're going to repeat in two weeks to see exactly what strands are still there, um, is the treatment working, you know, different things like that. So again, if you are sexually assaulted or if a patient is sexually assaulted, you want to let them know don't go home and wash up. I mean, that's the first thing that you want to do because if you're very uncomfortable, you know, you just feel, you feel violated, but you do not want to take a shower right away. One, you discard of evidence, and two, um, you, you, you just want to go so that way they can get everything that they can possibly get, right, from, 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 that, from that first initial site, right, because you want to be able to obtain a culture. If you clean and wash yourself and whatever discharge that just went, right, that had the bacteria in there, now you have to wait and you prolong that process, okay? So, again, I know it, feels, it may feel really, really nasty, it may feel really, really violated, but please, please, you want to explain if they have been violated, sexually violated, you want to make sure that they go to the police department, they go to the hospital, to the ER, and let them get all of the sampling off, right? And then from there, then they can go take a shower. Well, there are interventions. So, main thing is going to be education, counseling, okay? Because these are things that can be prevented. So you want to make sure that you're counseling them and let them know about safe sex. Also let them know never to assume. You may have a good looking guy or a good looking girl and you may think that, oh, nothing is wrong with them. They don't have any infections. They don't have any diseases. And eh, wrong. You don't know, right? It can be in the most beautiful person, it can be in the most ugliest person, it can be in the most biggest person, the most skinniest person, it doesn't matter, whatever you're attracted to, okay? Um, um, you always have that risk, okay? You also want to talk, talk to them about risk of behavior, right? If you see that this person is very promiscuous, um, they want multiple partners, right? And, and they're very open about their sexuality, you want to let them know the risk of their behavior. You know, that if they are going to do it, make sure that they have safe sex, that they get tested with their partner, that, um, you know, they try to limit um, those partners to, you know, one or two partners or so, right? You want to provide that education to them to let them know, hey, this is risky behavior and this is what's going to lead or, you know, cause certain things, okay? Also, self-care. You want to let them know, you know, to take care of themselves, you know, 
condoms. You know, they have female condoms now. Well, they, they've had female condoms for a while, but you know, you don't always have to rely on the guy to have the condom. You can have the female condom. There's, you know, different different things, all right? And you also want to educate them, let them know, yeah, you may be taking care of yourself to not get pregnant, but just because you're taking birth control, birth control doesn't, um, is not a barrier of S STIs, okay? You still need something else that's going to protect against S STIs, okay? Also, if you want to tell them about their annual screening for chlamydia and gonorrhea, three to four months after the treatment, okay? Mainly so, mainly so the chlamydia one, okay? And you want to talk to them three to four months after the treatment is completed because um, you want to talk to them about how can they um, reduce the risk of infertility. Because a lot of times women who have chlamydia and things like that, there is a big risk of having um, infertility later on. Okay, and you're not able to get pregnant, or you have difficulties getting pregnant, or you may lose the, the the baby or the fetus each and every time you do try to get pregnant. Okay, so there should be education about the reducing the risk of infertility. All right, and that is pretty much it with chlamydia and gonorrhea. So again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, also, remember to check the description box for more added information. Any comments, please also write it down in the comment section below. And again, don't forget to subscribe and thank you for coming on this journey.